the evaluation from start to finish with a one hour break and another half hour of breaks distributed throughout the day. As, the res as a result of the work that you performed, did you form any opinions with respect to Ms. Hurd? I did. What were those opinions? I, uh, the results of Ms. Hurd's evaluation supported two diagnoses, borderline personality disorder and histrionic personality disorder. What is a diagnosis? A diagnosis is a way that we essentially, that psychologists, psychiatrists, anybody in the mental health field thinks about a disorder. It helps us to communicate a set of symptoms that a person is experiencing. And along with that set of symptoms, it, it tells other professionals a lot about how those symptoms might have developed, how that person might behave, perceive the world. Um, it also drives treatment. The real purpose is to determine what sort of in interventions will be most effective for the person. Yeah. Um, previously, you made reference to, uh, I think you called it the DSM-5. What's yes. that? So the DSM-5, that stands for the Diagnostic Statistical Manual, uh, version 5. And uh, that contains every diagnosis we use in mental health. And uh, we it's, it's the authoritative manual of mental diagnoses. Is uh, performing diagnoses something you typically do in your line of work? Yes. Thank you. Um, so you referenced uh, two personality disorders. What's a personality disorder? To understand a personality disorder, I think it can be helpful first to kind of define personality. So personality, something we take for granted, but these are the traits, the characteristics, the way we think, we feel, and we act that make us who we are. And these traits are pretty stable over time and across situations. We might uh, you know, be sure to mind our P's and Q's when we're meeting somebody new, but overall, if somebody were to describe us or if we were to describe ourselves, we have a pretty good sense of who we are. Um, sometimes an easy way to think of it is imagining how you might describe a brother or sister or a child if you have children. Their personalities are pretty clear to you. A personality disorder is some sort of dysfunction in those enduring traits. So as opposed to other types of mental illness, um, when you think about something like depression, that's episodic. It comes and it goes. And when it's treated with medication, it can pretty much be completely mitigated or minimized in a person's life and their personality is still there separate from the depression. When we have a personality disorder, there are going to be disturbances in several different areas that are visible in almost all different facets of their life. Is there a manner in which uh, personality disorders are commonly diagnosed? Yes, so they can be diagnosed in a treating environment. A uh, treating psychologist or a therapist or a psychiatrist simply does a diagnostic interview, which involves assessing multiple areas of a person's history back down through childhood. I'm going to stop you for a second. Yes. What's a treating environment? Oh, sometimes I'll slip into these words. I apologize. So a treating environment in therapy, if somebody is going in for treatment, um, the, psycho the mental health provider will ask them questions to find out what sort of symptoms they've experienced and what sort of things have occurred in their life that might be consistent with these disorders or rule out these disorders, prove that there is no reason for these disorders to be considered. They might also pay attention to their observations of the client over time and new information the client provides them. The most reliable way, however, to ever come about a diagnosis really is through a comprehensive psychological assessment. And I might use the words assessment, examination, testing, interchangeably. They all mean the same thing. It's combining information from multiple different sources. Um, one main source is psychological testing using validated objective measures. That means that they've been tested, they've been shown to be accurate for testing what you want to test, and in the environment you're testing. So there are measures specific for court environments where someone might respond differently. You integrate that with the same interview I was telling you that people would do for therapy. We do that as well. And then in a courtroom setting, you're going to look at all the legal records, all of those documents, corroborating information to sort of check your hypotheses that may be developing 
and also check against the examinee's statements to confirm whether you have enough evidence of a certain diagnosis. So what's a clinical interview? A clinical interview is a very comprehensive interview. It includes a person's entire life history, um, as well as very specifically looks at any symptoms they might have. This can start as far back as birth. You might find out if there were any issues with their delivery, um, any uh, genetic issues, any intellectual issues. How did they do, what was their home life like? How was discipline handled? What's their relationship with their primary?